Giza. If you measure it, it is from the bottom to the apex, 606 feet. That's important. That's an ancient unit of measurement. It's referred to as the stade. Now I want to show you this. These are the Newark earthworks. They're here in Ohio. Yes, Ohio. The earthworks are made, uh, they're structures that um, are made now of earth that it has been built up from the ground in a perfect circle. Here it is, a perfect circle and a perfect octagon. But they were built by the ancient Hopewell civilization. They date back from 300 BC to 480. So let's look at these structures here. Bring this up. I want to show you something. If you square the inside of the octagon, here's a square and here's a square. If you square it, this is what surveyors do when they're measuring. They square the circle, and then they divide that area into four equal parts, or cubes, and then you find that each cube is made up of 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet, 606. It's made up of stades exactly the same. Now, if that's not interesting enough, look at the angle of the Great Pyramid of Giza. If you take the angle of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the slope is 51.8 degrees. Let's go back to the earthworks. If you measure the line that goes straight through the center of the structure, right here, and then you go true north, it's 51.8 degrees. That angle is exactly the same angle as the pyramids of Giza. It is the same math, the same calculations as ancient Egyptians. Let me show you one more connection. In 1860, David Wyrick, he's a guy who surveyed the Newark earthworks. He was digging into a mound near those earthworks and he found a wooden coffin made of oak. They opened up the coffin and found a skeleton of a man holding a little box that was about 8.10 inches in size. The box had been cemented shut here. This, by the way, is sitting in Ohio. Well, he opened up the box and he found a little man inside, a little black stone. They took it to scholars and they looked at it. The man seems to be carrying something and there's writing here. At first they couldn't recognize. The writing is, they thought in 1860, some sort of Hebrew. Well, finally, about 20 years later, they found some rabbis living in the area, and the rabbis looked at that, and they could read it. They said it was an old, old kind of block Hebrew, a uh, block Hebrew, and it was a rendition of the Ten Commandments. Now, this is another piece. Block Hebrew. They said they'd never seen anything like it. Mainstream archaeologists at the time called this a hoax. But then in 1900, or just about after 1900, in Israel, they found the same block-style Hebrew writing. Mainstream archaeologists still dismissed the findings. They found it in Israel, and they found it in Ohio. But there was another stone that they found that they couldn't argue. This is the Bat Creek Stone. It was found during the course of an official Smithsonian evacuation. The Smithsonian didn't understand the, uh, uh, the meaning of the writing on the stone. They thought it was Cherokee, since it came from Cherokee country. They didn't realize that it's actually Hebrew. They had published this originally upside down. They threw it in a box at the bottom of the Smithsonian, put it in the basement. Many years later, a scholar took it out of the box, looked at it, and went, oh my gosh, it's upside down. It's Phoenician, ancient Hebrew. So what's going on here? What is that about? Good, good question. Where is that history? <laughs> How'd they get there? I'll show you in a few that? minutes, and we're going to have a conversation, and I'm going to show you some more things that the Smithsonian Either Science, he. Government, Commerce colluded to erase. By the way, I want to thank the directors of the documentary Lost Civilizations of North America for bringing these stories to my attention. I was blown away. To find more, visit the website lostcivilizationdvd.com. Here's the thing we should be asking ourselves. I don't know the story of these. Do you know that? Did you know that? Do you live in Ohio and did you know that? Why not? Were the American Indians wronged? Yes. Yes, and that's what we focus on in America, is we were bad to the American... Forget about it, it's in the past. 
The question should be the ones that the founders asked. Who are they? What knowledge do they have? Can you imagine the difference we would have now if we would put our differences aside and put our past in the past and concentrate on today and say, let's learn from each other. What do you have? What is that? What is that? When we come back, I'm going to be joined by uh, uh, P Peter Lilbach, who is, uh, I've told you before, um, is uh, one of my favorite authors. He's going to talk to me a little bit about the founders. Lilbach. And I'm also going to show you some documents that show...